In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make your first design in Adobe Illustrator using some really simple tools that anybody can learn. So if you are a beginner, this video is for you. But before we get into the video, let's talk about 2021 because man, it's been a year. 2021 has been a crazy year and an important one for me and my life. A lot has happened. You know, I moved to Tennessee. I married my best friend, Amy, and she is now Amy Pangus, which is insane to say. And uh, I am so thankful for that. And we found out that we are having a little girl. So I'm going to be having a daughter. And that is a crazy thing to think about. I never thought that I'd be a dad this soon. We get to introduce Scarlett Lee Pangus this March. And I am so excited to uh, get to introduce you guys to her. And um, it's one of those crazy feelings in my stomach that I just, I don't even know how to describe. And uh, yeah, that, that's probably the craziest thing that's happened in 2021. But besides all that, you know, the, the growth on this channel has been insane as well. You guys have shown me a lot of love. You guys have supported what, I, what I've what i been doing, whether it's with Merch Design Academy, obviously that didn't work out, but you guys still supported it and that means the world to me. When one door closes, another one opens and 2022 is definitely that door opening and so much more um, to come. So I'm not worried about the failures. I honestly look at them like growth and a learning experience. So I learned a lot. So we're looking forward to 2022, guys. We're not looking back, we're looking forward. And I think 2022 is going to be very exciting. I can see this channel going in a different direction. Um, obviously still bringing you guys high tier tutorials, teaching you merch design, logo design, all that good stuff. I still think that that's going to be a strong point on this channel. So I don't take away from this channel. I did turn Merch Design Academy into my second channel, which I am very excited about. I think I'm gonna start talking about filmmaking, videography, and even start vlogging on that channel. I have so much stuff I wanna do on that one channel. And honestly, I'm probably even going to lose a lot of weight and document it on that channel. So if you guys are interested in that, you guys can subscribe to that channel in the description below. Before we open up Illustrator, go ahead and download the document in the description below. I set up an AI file so you guys can open it up and follow along with me. It's going to be exciting, let's get started. As soon as you open the provided AI file that I gave you guys, you're going to see two squares right here, two white squares. These are artboards, okay? On the first artboard, we have a wolf and we made this one in the last um, vector video and you guys love that video it did really well so really stoked about that but we're gonna reuse this wolf because I love him so much and then on the right artboard with second artboard we have some barbed wire now if you guys read the red text I, I don't want to go over it too much but it says for personal and educational use only no printing or selling allowed that is simply because of the rights that I have on these photos they're not meant for anybody else to use but me but um, I still wanted to give these to you guys so you can use them and practice with them okay so if you are going to recreate this design I'm totally fine with that but do it with your own image assets okay another really important thing is setting up our document properly because obviously we want to have the same looking document right so let's go all the way up to the top right you're gonna see switch workspace okay and we want to click on essentials classic and if yours is, looks different than mine we can reset essentials classic and it's going to make it look like this okay once you reset your artboard you're going to see something that looks like this it's gonna look kind of ugly if we go all the way down though under properties on this little middle bar right here you're gonna see layers and we're gonna click and drag that above properties and it's going to put it on its own tab, its own section, which is what we want. And then we need to do the same thing for everything else, obviously, because we're missing artboards, right? So we also wanna click artboards and drag that over next to layers. Um, we can keep that right there. We don't really need that. There's a couple other things that we are going to need as well. And one of them is Pathfinder, okay? So let's go all the way up to window and let's find Pathfinder, which is all the way down the menu. Click Pathfinder, it's going to show it right here. And let's go ahead and click and drag it under our layers palette. And now we're going to have Pathfinder, Transform and Align. So on the first section we have layers artboards and then under that we have Pathfinder, Transform and Align in no specific order, but those are really important. So if you have those, we are ready to move on. We do need to make another artboard right now. So we are going to go up to the layer section. Next to layers, you see artboards. Click on number two and then hit the little plus icon under it. And that is going to create a new artboard for us, which is where we are going to make some magic happen. I wanna head over to my first artboard. I wanna click on the wolf and it's going to highlight him. And you're gonna see this bounding box around him, which is perfect. We're gonna hold an option, click and drag him. And as you can see, we have a duplicate copy, which is exactly what we want. And then we are just going to drag him onto our new, new artboard, if I can talk properly. And we can center him using the alignment options right here. We have the wolf on its own artboard. Problem with him right now is he doesn't have a background on him. He doesn't have any color and I don't want that. So in order to fix that, what I'm gonna do 
is I'm gonna duplicate him one more time by clicking on him and then doing Command C, Shift Command V to paste on top. In order to create a solid fill, all I have to do is go to the Pathfinder menu and below that you see Pathfinders. We're gonna click the middle option which says Merge and then we are going to click the very top option which is the first option called Unite. Once you do that, it's going to solid fill it with black, which is perfect for what we're doing. Now you can choose any color you want on the very top here and um, have fun with it. I'm gonna go with red because I like red. And we are going to send this to the back now because he is in front of everything. So it shows uh, underneath the black layer, which is our wolf layer that has all the detail, right? So there's a few things we could do. We could go to the layers palette and just drag it below everything, but that takes too much time. I like to use shortcuts, so I'm gonna press Command and then the left bracket on my keyboard to send it to the back, and now we have something that looks like this, which is great. We also need to add some color to the teeth and the eye so it pops out. If you're ever confused on what layer you're selecting, just go to the Layers palette, hit the little drop-down icon right here, and then you're going to see that there's a blue box next to the layer that you're selecting. We are selecting the red wolf, which is solid filled with red, and that's exactly what we want because we are going to make another duplicate copy and erase what we don't want and keep what we do want and change that to white so we can have two different colors going on. So I'm gonna press Command C, Shift Command V to paste that in place. As you can see, we have the uh, red wolf again. We are going to make this maybe an off color so I can see it and it's not blending in with my background. And um, again, we just need to use the bracket tool on our keyboard to send it to the back. You want this off white layer to be above the red layer. Now it is. So what we could do is use the eraser tool and just erase what we don't want, right? So I'm gonna hit Z on my keyboard, zoom in, get the eraser tool make it nice and big. And as you can see, we can delete what we don't want and keep what we do want. Simple as that, guys. You wanna take your time on this, obviously, but I'm going to kind of rush through it just because I'm trying to show you guys how to do all this and it's a lot, so we're gonna kind of get through it. But I just wanted to show you guys this because it's so important. There's other ways to do this as well, but this is the way I like to do it. So um, find what way works for you. But again, I like this way, so I'm gonna use it. My goal is to keep his teeth that color. That's literally it. So I'm just kind of like eyeing it right now to figure out where his teeth might be. So we had the red solid fill and we made another copy of it and put it above the other red fill, made it off white, which is like more of like a gray color. And then I just use the eraser tool to erase around the parts that I don't want. And that's pretty much it. Now we're at a really good spot. So now I can start messing with my barbed wire, which is in my middle layer, which is the second artboard. If I click on this, I can hold an option again, click and drag and make a duplicate copy. So what I was thinking is making it look like he has barbed wire around his neck. And to do this, I'm just literally going to rotate it and just kind of put it where I want it to be. So maybe we can have one like right here and it doesn't have to be perfect. That one looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna keep that where it is. And then maybe we can have one crossing. I don't wanna go too crazy with this, but I just wanna do enough to make it look like it's got some variation, if that makes sense. And then what we're gonna do now is mask this out anyway, so it's not a huge deal if something's not perfect. And this is going to make sense in a second. So we're gonna to go to our pen tool and just make sure white's selected. You can really have any color at first, but ultimately you wanna make sure it's white or black. In order to make the selection, hit P on your keyboard to go to the pen tool, and let's just select around the parts that we want to be masked. So I'm gonna go probably like right here. We can always make adjustments to the mask later on too, so it's not a huge deal if it's perfect or not. So now that we have the mask, we can select all the barbed wire at once. We need to make every single selection so we know that we're masking the right stuff. And I think I have it all selected, so now you wanna select the mask as well. Once you make that selection, now we're gonna use that selection in order to hide the outside of the barbed wire where we don't want it to be. So this is going to be a little confusing to some of you, but basically what you do is you click the mask, right, that you wanna use, and then you wanna hold in shift and select the barbed wire because we're gonna be masking that out. Now we're gonna use this menu called transparency to make the mask and it's right here on this little toolbar in the center, right next to layers. To find transparency, all you have to do is locate the double circles. One's a little bit transparent on top and then one's a solid circle under that. And once you find that icon, you can uh, just click make mask. That's all you have to do. And it's going to mask out that selection. We can see that it didn't do a perfect job, right? Like obviously there's some issues here that I can see, but that's the cool thing about a mask is you can adjust it 
later on and make it look the way I want it to look. I'm not trying to make it look like hyper realistic, honestly, so it doesn't have to be perfect. So we have the wolf and the barbed wire. We're not gonna go any further than that because I want it to be simple for you guys to understand. If I were to adjust the barbed wire anymore, it'd just get really complicated. So um, now we're gonna move on to adding our own brand, like our own brand, our own flavor to this design by using typography. And in order to do that, I wanna make another layer above the wolf and this is going to be our type layer. So I'm just gonna double click on that layer by left clicking twice, and that's going to allow me to rename that layer. And once you have that, you can just hit T on your keyboard and type out whatever you want. I'm gonna type out wolf clothing. You can resize this so many different ways, but what I like to do is use a little wire frame that's around it, hold and shift, click one of the edges and just drag out and it's going to resize it perfectly. Before we do anything else, I wanna change the font. So I'm gonna to go to this font called Brothers OT. It's one of my favorite fonts and I use it all the time. I just find it really like nice. I don't know why I love that it's like chiseled and and then we are going to select a an alternative color to this red. I might go with this like tan color. I don't know quite yet. So we're going to play it by ear. I, I don't know about that color. So I'm just going to go with black for now. And then what I want to do is press shift command O on my keyboard and that is going to outline everything. The reason why I outline that is because I want to create a different path around the text and add a stroke. Okay, but I'm not going to just add a stroke because that will look ugly and it's not going to look as good. So in order to make this look better, I'm gonna go up to Object, Path, and we're gonna use something called Offset Path, and you're gonna be able to see what it's doing, and you just wanna use your arrow down on your keyboard in order to like adjust this, right? And you can always type in a pixel number if you want. So this is at four pixels. You could type in two if you wanted to, whatever you want, and then we are going to add a stroke to this instead. And as you can see, now it's definitely a lot more interesting. So by creating that offset path, we can add a stroke to it. And now we have a much more interesting look. And I want to make this red. Now what we want to do is select just the black type. And we're going to offset path one more time. So we're going to go all the way down to path, offset path. Only this time we're going to go inside. So I'm going to use the arrow down on my keyboard. Now what we want to do is click on the menu next to joins and make sure this is set to round and this is going to make it just look a little better. And then from here, we are going to color pick the same gray that's on the eye or the teeth, it doesn't matter. You could make your selection. Now I'm gonna use the transparency options again in order to mask out a part of this that I wanna keep. So I'm gonna use a rectangle tool with white selected. We want pure white, and I'm just going to select somewhere like right here. That looks pretty good. And now we can select the gray, all of the gray at once. We do wanna make sure all of that's selected. With all that selected, you just wanna click Make Mask, and that is going to mask it out. And as you can see, now we have something that looks a little bit more interesting, but I wanna go a little further by adding a gradient to this. So in order to do that, I'm gonna to go to my foreground color, and I just wanna select a basic mask. This one is fine. And as you can see, it's going from left to right, but you can fix that by clicking on the gradient menu and just dragging down or up and it creates this interesting look. That's not the color I want, but we can fix that by going into the gradient menu, which is right above transparency, which is what we just used. So if you go to gradient, you're gonna see the color right there. And all we have to do is click on the left one and change it to white. So it's you know obviously the same color palette that we're going for. And now if we click off of it, you can see that we have this interesting look. Now using the layers palette, we can click and drag the type layer below everything. And that is going to send it to the back and that's exactly what we want. Now that we have type selected already, we're gonna hit T on our keyboard again and just type out clothing, really simple. One thing that I wanted to mention is you should also group your text components together. That way you can do things like center it. So if I were to center this without being grouped, it's going to center everything individually and you don't want that. So make sure you select every single part of your text layer that's together. Once you select it, all you have to do is press Command G and it's going to group it together in this separate type layer that you have on the layers palette, if that makes sense. So it's essentially a group within a group. So now when you go to center it, it's going to be centered together, not separately. That's basically all there is to it. I think what I wanna do is add a rectangle below the wolf and round it a little bit. So I'm just gonna go about right here. I have a black stroke on it right now. And then I'm just going to go to my direct selection tool. And if I zoom in on it, you can see there's these little white dots on the corners. If you have the updated version of Adobe Illustrator, you should see this. And um, I'm gonna make it look something like that, kind of more rounded. And then I wanna change the stroke to a solid fill. And then we could send that behind everything. And then from there, I might just take the red text and make it white to blend into our background. And by the way, when you go to print this, you do wanna make sure it is properly saved and properly resized. So your screen printing shop or DTG machine is already kind of prepared. 
and uh, everything matches up. So if you wanna print this 10 inches by 10 inches, you wanna make sure that the document is 10 inches by 10 inches, and there's no, uh, I guess not a lot of extra space around. Now let's pretend like we're gonna print this. So I wanna go to File New. We're gonna make a new document real quick, guys. So I'm gonna go to Inches. Let's go to Inches, and let's do 14 by, I don't know, 18, and then everything else can stay the same, CMYK, uh, 300 PPI, which is a resolution for printing, hit create, and we're going to paste this in place and resize it. And there's a lot of moving parts right here, so it is going to like be a little slow on some computers. So just make sure the size matches the exact print size that you want, and that's, that's all you have to do. And then from here, you could go file save as, or save a copy, and save this as an AI file, a PDF, an EPS, and a PNG, and send those to your screen printing shop, and they're gonna be ready to go. This was supposed to be a really like fast tutorial, but it took me forever for some reason. Maybe I'm like really rusty, I don't know. That is it for this tutorial. I hope I was able to help you guys make your first design in Adobe Illustrator. And if I was, and uh, you guys love the tutorial, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you aren't already, and leave a comment in the section below if you guys have any questions at all. I'll be there for you to help you out. If you guys can do me a quick favor, follow me on Instagram, let's blow my Instagram up because it is lacking lately. And uh, if you guys do that, that would mean the world to me, and that's all I ask for these videos, guys. So um, follow me at Charlie Pangus, and of course, stay tuned for more videos on this channel. I'll catch you guys in the very next one. Peace.